In 2021, Jeff Bezos brought us New World, the biggest Western-made MMO to release in years. Massive open world, next-gen graphics, action combat, and holy shit, it's not pay to win. This was it, the WoW killer we'd been waiting for. Releasing at the perfect time too, with the entire MMO community more desperate than an attention-seeking e-girl, for something that even slightly scratched that feeling World of Warcraft and EverQuest gave us almost 20 years ago at this point. Launch day, big numbers, 700, 800, 900,000 player peak on the opening weekend. People were having fun, those that could log into the servers that is. It wasn't until a few days post launch that the cracks started to appear. Loot boxes, run across the map, loot more boxes, run to the other side of the map, kill a higher level version of the same enemy you had killed 10 times prior. If you're feeling cheeky, you'd break up the questing with some life skills and town board missions, rinse and repeat till level 60. For some, this was where their new world journey ended, but for those that stuck around with the hopium that things would get better, well, the light at the end of the tunnel was a lot further away than expected. Well, it's been six months. New World has consistently lost players every month since launch, until now. Has New World's recent updates finally managed to stem the bleeding? Can the game finally build some momentum and become the MMO of our dreams? Probably not, but here's a cool game you can play on mobile in the meantime. Kingdom Maker. This glorious game combines the RTS, RPG, and simulation genres together so that you can build a powerful army, conquer your enemies, and become that ruthless medieval lord your ancestors wanted you to be. Starting out, you'll have a basic wooden fort with an army consisting of peasants. But over time, you'll venture forth throughout the realm, defeating orcs, bandits, and other nobles in your quest to become the most renowned ruler in the land. Obviously, a true ruler wants their bloodline to persist through many generations, so this game actually allows you to hook up and breed with other nobles to build your dynasty. It's not only a game that features Total War style combat, city building and resource management, it's also got a bit of relationship simulator thrown in there for good measure too. Personally, I love games like this. Varied gameplay, a nice art style with a clean minimalist user interface, and it's a game that doesn't take itself too seriously with a fun whimsical tone. The perfect game to relax with on your phone. Lay siege to your enemies, upgrade your troops, construct buildings, trade with other players, form alliances, explore dungeons, manage resources, and get romantic with other nobles to expand your dynasty. That's Kingdom Maker in a nutshell, and you should click the link in the description below below to download the game on Android and iOS now. So after getting a bit bored of Lost Ark, I thought I'd check in on New World as it's had a lot of updates since I stopped playing, and I'd heard that things are finally getting better. I mean, I'd hope so, things can only get so bad before literally anything they do is an improvement, right? I opened the game, was greeted with a pop-up telling me about the new quests, the new expedition, and the new weapon added to the game. Then I saw my character. Basically what you'd get if Wolverine fucked a scarecrow. Checked the servers, things not looking too hot. Logged into the game, quick look at my stats from before I quit. Maxed every weapon, maxed every life skill except jewel crafting, engineering, and weaponsmithing. Went to the auction house to see if the economy had unfucked itself, and I was pleasantly surprised. Silver ore actually has some value to it now, no way. Stone is going for 0.26 each. 
aged wood has gone up in price. Green wood, 0.31 each. Wow. It looks like the prices of everything have gone up quite a lot since the last time I played the game. Two things in life are certain, death and taxes. Thankfully, it seems like the house tax is much cheaper in New World now than it used to be. 69 gold per week. Nice. Went to the market to buy and test out the new blunderbuss weapon. Was immediately pissed off when I realised the devs still hadn't added the function to sort gear by attributes yet. I thought they would have fixed this with New World by now. Being able to sort weapons by their main stat attribute. Like, I can sort gems, I can sort perks, but I can't just sort strength, int, and so on. Eventually I got my weapon which scales with a mix of both int and strength, bit of a weird combo, slapped on my strength set and headed on over to Dead Man's Cove, which to this day gives me PTSD. Right, let's test out this weapon. Okay, so you shoot twice pretty quickly. Okay, infinite stagger is still a thing. This blunderbuss is doing fuck all damage to these level 25 elites. Maybe the abilities are strong though. F ability, go. Okay, so that's like a split shot. Fucking hell, the combat still feels about as smooth as a porcupine. I played around with the blunderbuss until level 10-ish. It seems okay, but not really my playstyle. At this point, I went to check out the elite grind spots, because at the time I stopped playing, New World's endgame progression consisted of ninja looting the elite chests until you got higher gear score drops. Can I still get hit? Yeah, I can. Fuck. Ooh, yes, okay. Okay. If you want to get your gear score up, you're going to have to come to these spots in a group. There's got to be a way that I can be a rat. Okay. Now. Okay, I think we've got it. I think we've ninja'd it. We got it. Easy. We got an expertise level up. And this time when you get an expertise level up, you actually get a pop-up telling you about it. So it's not something you have to track on a bit of paper like I did in the past. I ran through Mirkgard and eventually made it to the entrance of the new expedition. So this is the entrance to the newest dungeon added to the game, Tempest's Heart. And there's a few players hanging around trying to get a group. At this point, it became clear to me that the endgame progression had shifted away from the daily chest zergs and level 66 boss camping to actually doing the content that people enjoyed most about New World, the dungeons, or expeditions as they're called in this game. I logged back into the game the next day and discovered that the devs had made massive convenience changes to the way storage works now. This is the best convenience thing I've seen them add to the game so far. You can now access every storage in the game from the same area, transfer goods back and forth between each storage, and it costs nothing and you can do it instantly with no issues or inconveniences. The last time I played this game I was just filling my storages all across the map, so I've probably got quite a lot of money's worth of stuff to sell. Things are actually worth money now. When I quit the game, everything was like worthless and it was really difficult to make money. What? Star Metal Ore's worth so much now. Wow, you can actually make money in this game from gathering again. That's so good. Running out in the world and gathering stuff used to be my favorite thing to do in this game and I stopped doing it because you couldn't really make a lot of money because the market crashed. I don't know what they've done to change this, but that's brilliant. Yeah, what? Gold ingots are worth something as well. This was completely worthless the last time I played as well. Gold being worth something, that actually makes sense. Pretty fundamental thing that they've managed to solve by the looks of it, economy. I jumped into a game of Outpost Rush, got my teabag game on, and the RNG gods smiled upon me by putting me in the winning team twice in a row. Upon winning, I got two brand new resources, gypsum and umbral shards. Umbral shards are basically a resource you can use to upgrade gear past 600, and gypsum is a resource you can collect from various activities such as gathering, expeditions, outpost rush, elite mob killing, mob farming, and so on. Basically every type of activity in the game, and you use this to craft items that increase your expertise level, which used to be referred to as your gear watermark if you haven't played for a while. Eventually, I realised the server I was playing on was a bit dead, so I used my free transfer and changed to Utopia. I bought myself a full set of light healer gear, sorted out my fashion game, and did a bit of gathering. Hidden stash, what's that? That's really rewarding, 126 coins and diamond gypsum, so you can actually upgrade your gear and progress your gear score from just gathering now because it drops diamond gypsum. That feels really good. Yoink my star metal vein now. 
He's got a gold farmer name. You still have that problem with New World where you stand on a bit of water miner and you're kind of like jittering around. <laughs> Apparently, I've never been up here. Uncharted Landmark. Oh, this was something that they added in the winter update. I think this was like a Christmas event or something. It's cool that they've kept it in the game. Different mob types as well. A giant yeti. They've definitely improved the dodge roll for light armor. It feels way faster and smoother than before. Topaz Gypsum Attunement Potion. Oh, so you can drink this potion, then grind on monsters level 55 plus to then get a chance of them dropping another type of gypsum. That's cool. I saw in chat that people were doing a chest run world tour, so I caught up to the Zerg and tagged along. I can't remember the last time I saw this many new world players in one location. Seems like people are coming back. The last time I played the game, this Imperial Palace grind spot was like a level 60 grind spot or something. It was completely irrelevant content, but now it's level 66 and they seem to have made it into a much more relevant spot. Yo, look at this guy. That's some cool ass armor. Emo boy over here. This dude looks like a member of My Chemical Romance. Cardio is good for your body and mental health, but only in real life. Running across the entire New World map multiple times per day was a pain in the ass at launch. Thankfully, getting around the game is way easier now than before, due to fast travel only costing a max of 20 Azoth, regardless of how much weight you're carrying. On top of that, there's also more fast travel points in the world now. Sorry, New World, you're no longer a top 10 walking simulator. It was time for me to jump into some dungeons. Thankfully, getting entrance keys is much easier now, and spam running dungeons is the preferred way of farming gear score nowadays. We cleared Lazarus with zero deaths, infinite upgrades, and perfect gameplay. I hoped. Oh, Lizard Queen. I got you. Okay, Lizard Queen. I don't know how you've gotten one shot. There's nothing I could have done about that. I got you. <coughs> Fuck. Oh, I didn't even see your health was low. Sorry. I was sne busy sneezing. Oh, shit. I'm just dead. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm just panicked. I'm just panicking. I'm just panicking. I'm just panicking. Oh, no. Ow. Ow. There it is. Upon beating the dungeon, I got a mutated expedition tuning orb. This is for hard mode dungeons with various mutations that change weekly. Basically New World's version of Mythic Plus for the late game sweat lords who want to push to 625 gear score. The next few days I continued playing New World and had a decent enough time. Game still has a lot of problems to fix, but I think the worst is over. I expect the dropping player numbers have bottomed out at this point. Hopefully it's only up from here. If not, then RIP, I guess. Things I liked about New World after revisiting it, I'd missed running around the world to gather stuff, progression seems a lot better now, convenience changes with storage and Azoth, and the economy seems better. Things I disliked, mobs still infinite stagger the fuck out of you, still can't sort gear by attributes on the marketplace, combat gets boring after a while, and I have no idea what I'll do in this game when I cap my gear score. Quick look at the recent Steam reviews, still pretty tragic. Recent reviews are actually worse than the overall reviews, so make of that what you will. Hope you enjoyed the video, follow me on social media, leave a comment for the algorithm gods, and I'll see you in the next one.